hi and welcome to another week of 10's Weird News. Hold, now my love, you Weddings are universally seen as joyous occasions, celebrating love and union. However, they don't play out the same way all over the world. And in some cases, cultural practices and rituals may strike outsiders as downright bizarre. From whimsical customs to solemn ceremonies, wedding traditions from around the world come in all shapes and sizes. Brace yourself as we explore the 15 weirdest wedding rituals and traditions in the world. Number 15. No toilet. Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei are everyone's favorite Asian tourist destinations, and it's partly because of the local blend of cultures. But sometimes things can go a bit too far. In Borneo, an island shared by the three countries, for instance, there's a unique wedding custom that demands respect from all couples. So, what is it? Well, according to the locals, engaging in certain bodily functions, specifically going to the bathroom for a number two, can bring bad luck to the couple's fertility. Peculiar as it may sound, revolves around a belief deeply ingrained in the local culture. Couples preparing for their wedding ceremony are strictly forbidden from going for number twos for three days before their big day. Yes, you heard that right. Three full days. To adhere to this custom, the couple must strictly follow a specific diet in the days leading up to the wedding. To ensure compliance, the family appoints a person to monitor the couple, preventing any attempts to circumvent the tradition. While this custom may strike outsiders as bizarre, to the locals, it is a sacred practice passed down through generations. Number 14. Kidnapping of the Bride No, this is not a joke. In Kyrgyzstan, a Central Asian country, kidnapping women and forcing them into marriage was a peculiar tradition that once prevailed. To make matters even worse, the bride's tears were believed to be indicative of a happy marriage. The practice persisted for centuries until it was officially outlawed in 1991. However, before this legal intervention, some parents would even grant consent for the marriage of their daughters if they were kidnapped. Central Asia as a whole has had a history of kidnapping women for marriage. Most famously, Yesuge, the father of the great Mongol warlord Genghis Khan, kidnapped his bride from another chieftain. However, as societies evolve, so do cultures. While the practice has been outlawed, it still happens in some cases. As for the notion that tears symbolize happiness in matrimony, that is not necessarily tied to bride kidnapping. Instead, it reflects the cultural beliefs deeply ingrained in Kyrgyz society, which may seem perplexing to outsiders, but are perfectly normal for the people living there. Number 13. Chicken Sacrifice. In South China, a certain wedding tradition may unsettle the faint-hearted. Before commencing wedding preparations, the couple must first seek the approval of natural forces. And how do they do it? By sacrificing a chicken. Both the bride and groom hold a chicken in hand and perform a solemn ceremony where they sacrifice the bird. And it doesn't end there. Next, they inspect its liver. If the liver appears healthy and unblemished, it's considered an auspicious sign. They can then consider the permission granted and proceed with their wedding plans. However, if the liver fails to meet the standard, they can always attempt the ritual again at another time. While this tradition may evoke shock and discomfort in some, it holds deep cultural significance within Chinese culture. It is believed to invite good fortune and prosperity into the couple's marriage. Plus, it's a way for the couple to show their reverence for nature and seek its blessings on their union. But what becomes of the sacrificed chicken? Well, the bird is cooked and then served as part of the wedding feast, from the farm to table, right? Number 12. No privacy for the inaugural night. <laughs> Weddings in Africa unfold beautifully. Both the bride and groom radiate joy and everything appears perfect. However, as the newlyweds make their way to their honeymoon suite, that's when things get a bit weird. An elderly woman and man step forward and accompany them to their room. Well, so what, you may think? You see, they don't come out. These two individuals, typically a village elder and the mother of the bride or groom, are wedding attendants. 
They are to spend the first night of the newlyweds' marriage together with them. Yes, you heard it correctly. The attendants join the bride and groom for their inaugural married night. Before you jump to any conclusions, please note that there isn't a concrete reason behind this tradition. It's simply a custom passed down through generations. While some may find it unconventional or uncomfortable, it underscores the vast diversity of cultural rituals that exist beyond our familiar customs. Number 11. Bachelor and Spinster. Balls. In the vast outback of Australia, young people from rural areas come together for raucous celebrations annually or whenever possible. There are copious drinking and casual encounters. These events, known as bachelor and spinster balls, have gained notoriety for being too wild. Despite calls for shutdown due to concerns over excessive drinking and risky behavior, the tradition persists as a rite of passage for young individuals living in remote areas who may otherwise lead secluded lives. These gatherings provide an opportunity for young Australians from rural communities to socialize, let loose, and forge connections with peers in an environment where social opportunities may be limited. While the festivities may seem unconventional to outsiders, they allow young residents of the outback to bond and create lasting memories. Plus, young people get to socialize, meet potential partners, and form relationships that may eventually lead to marriage. When I see the night. Number 10. Multiple dating options in a cabin. In Cambodia, specifically among the Krung tribe, when a young woman reaches marriageable age, her father constructs a special cabin for her, deep within the jungle. But this isn't just any ordinary cabin. It's a sanctuary of love. The young woman can entertain multiple suitors here until she discovers the one who truly captivates her heart. The Krung tribe not only permits, but encourages multiple dating within this secluded cabin. The young woman gets a private space to explore her romantic options freely. Once she selects her preferred suitor, he is bound to accept her proposal and become her husband. But things don't end here. Once married, the newlywed husband cannot spend the night with his wife until he fulfills a unique payment to her father. The payment is a certain number of cows. Yes, cows, as in livestock. The more cows he presents, the greater the duration of their shared nights. Now you may wonder, what happens if the husband fails to meet the bride price in cows? Tradition dictates that in such a case, the couple cannot cohabit until he settles the debt in full. This enduring practice has persisted for centuries. Despite the passage of time, it remains an integral aspect of the Krung tribe's heritage. Number 9. Ghost Marriages Indian weddings are all the rage right now because of their massive spending and great food. But not all matrimonial unions are that lively. This applies all too literally to the practice of ghost marriages, also known as Pretha Kalyanam in the Tamil language. This tradition involves the solemn union of children who tragically passed away before reaching adulthood. When a girl or boy died before turning 18, their families would arrange for them to be married to another deceased child. It is seen as a ceremonial union of spirits. It is believed that by properly marrying off the souls of the departed, they are prevented from wandering as ghosts. Instead, they can find peace in the afterlife, having fulfilled their earthly marital obligations, and the family spares no expense either. They follow all the customary matrimonial rites. Parents even negotiate an astrologically suitable match and conduct a mock Hindu wedding on an auspicious date. During the ceremony, a coconut or doll representing the deceased child is adorned in wedding attire and carried to the cremation grounds. Here, a pyre is lit to symbolize the symbolic completion of the marriage. For the grieving parents, these posthumous unions offer solace, providing closure and hope that the departed souls are now at peace. In today's modern era, Advancements in healthcare and improved lifespans have rendered ghost marriages obsolete. Naturally, today, such ceremonies are very rare. But in any case, they remind us of the profound parental love and how past generations coped with the loss of their children. Number 8. Tooth Extraction 
In Bali, the excitement of tying the knot with your beloved can involve a dental procedure. Well, not exactly. It's a tradition in Bali for couples to undergo a tooth extraction as part of their wedding ceremony. Yes, you heard it right. They remove a perfectly healthy tooth. In the Balinese culture, teeth symbolize lust, greed, anger, and jealousy. By voluntarily extracting a tooth, the bride and groom symbolically rid themselves of these undesirable qualities, paving the way for a more positive and pure future together. But fear not, the tooth extraction process is not as gruesome as it sounds. Trained professionals handle the procedure with utmost care, ensuring it's as painless and safe as possible. Some even believe that it brings good luck to the newlyweds. Balinese weddings are also renowned for their vibrancy and color. Ceremonies feature elaborate offerings of fruit, flowers, and rice to the gods. The couple is adorned in traditional Balinese attire. The atmosphere is electric, with guests encouraged to join in the festivities, dancing and celebrating the joyous occasion. Overall, the culture bursts with energy, tradition, and vibrant celebrations. Number 7. Fish Beating The fish beating ritual, locally known as falaka, is a traditional Korean wedding ritual. Here's how it goes. Female relatives of the groom playfully whip his feet. The locals believe that it wards off misfortune and brings luck and prosperity to the marriage. In the Korean tradition, the feet are considered low-energy points, vulnerable to evil influences. By beating the groom's feet, vital life force is transferred to this unprotected spot, creating a ritual shield against negative energies. The groom, with his shoes and socks removed, lies flat on the floor while his feet are elevated and bound together. Female relatives then take turns lightly beating the soles of his feet, with a dried fish, often a flounder. <laughs> Doing so is believed to increase the groom's strength and virility for his wedding night, test his ability to concentrate under pressure, and transfer the fish's qualities of fertility and prosperity onto him. While the controlled pain of the ritual is considered fortifying, it also serves as a test of the groom's mental clarity and readiness for married life. Relatives may also ask him questions or have him recite poetry during the beating to assess his focus and concentration. Falaka fosters laughter and bonding between the groom and his new family. South Korean grooms gladly endure this ritual to preserve tradition and pave the way for a brighter future with their bride. Number 6. Breaking the Crockery Breaking the crockery may sound like a scene from a comedy sketch, but it's a strange wedding ritual that has persisted for years in Germany. On the eve of the wedding, the families of the bride and groom gather outside the bride's house, bearing dishes of all shapes and sizes. These dishes are then presented to the engaged couple. The couple then proceeds to smash them on the ground, shattering them into countless pieces. The belief behind it is that the noise created by the shattering dishes scares away any evil spirits that might be lurking around, ensuring that the marriage begins on a positive note. Additionally, the act of breaking something symbolizes the couple leaving behind any negative energies from their past and embarking on a fresh start together. But why specifically crockery? Well, legend has it that in the past, crockery was considered a luxury item. Therefore, breaking it was a way for families to showcase their wealth and prosperity. While this historical context may have faded, the symbolism has persisted. In modern times, breaking crockery is more about the symbolism than anything else. But if it brings the couple good fortune and wards off evil spirits, who are we to judge? Number 5. Blackening the Bride and Groom In the picturesque landscapes of Scotland, where one can imagine only pristine wedding images of elegance and romance. Wedding traditions are no less weird than what we've listed so far. In fact, one tradition here defies conventional notions of matrimonial bliss. Known as blackening the bride and groom, this pre-wedding ritual takes place on the evening before the couple's big day. So, what is it exactly? Well, the unsuspecting couple is captured by friends and family, whisked away in an open back truck, 
and paraded through town amidst a cacophony of clanging pots and pans. But this is only the beginning. They are then taken to a secret destination where the grim blackening ceremony unfolds. Here, the bride and groom are held down and covered from head to toe in a repugnant mixture of spoiled food, mud, grease, feathers, soot, and pretty much any other unsavory materials that the mischievous mob can gather. And no, it's not just slime that looks like it. It's the real deal. And it smells. The goal of this ritual is to completely coat the victims until they are unrecognizable. The attendants may use rotten eggs, curdled milk, fish guts, cow manure, gelatinous pig's blood, and even vegetable scraps. And does someone step in to stop them? Well, not exactly. In fact, all of this happens amidst jeering onlookers. The hapless couple may endure even further humiliation, such as being rolled in a pigsty or dunked in a mucky pond. As if things were not bad enough already, the attendees take photographs to memorialize the couple's unglamorous appearance. Despite the seemingly cruel treatment, blackening is not just a prank. Rather, it symbolizes the cleansing away of the couple's former bachelor and maiden statuses. In this vulnerable state, they can emerge reborn, like a phoenix from the ashes, ready to embark on their new journey as a married couple. The ceremony also helps forge stronger bonds between the two clans who will be joined by the marital union. Laughter helps diffuse any underlying anxieties over the impending nuptials and the blending of future in-laws, fostering a sense of camaraderie and unity amidst the chaos. Number 4. Pig-Shaped Cake in Sweden, weddings are infused with unique customs, but the one thing that stands out is the wedding cake. It is shaped like a pig. And no, this is not supposed to be a joke. This cake, made from marzipan, is meticulously made to resemble a pig, complete with intricate details. The pig-shaped cake holds a special place in Swedish wedding culture. It is believed to bring good luck and prosperity to the newlyweds, symbolizing abundance and happiness in their marriage. The cake, thus, is not just a culinary delight, but also a cherished tradition. In Swedish culture, pigs are considered symbols of good luck, abundance, and prosperity. Historically, pigs were valuable assets to Swedish farmers, providing meat, fat, and other resources essential for survival during harsh winters. As a result, pigs became associated with fertility, wealth, and prosperity. This love for pigs has naturally permeated their wedding celebrations as well. Guests eagerly anticipate the unveiling of the cake and admire its craftsmanship before indulging in its sweet flavor. As the newlyweds share a slice of the cake together, they symbolically embark on their journey into married life, surrounded by the good wishes and blessings of their loved ones. The pig-shaped cake adds a touch of whimsy and tradition to the joyous occasion. Number three. Bride market. Okay, this is not an exaggeration. The bride market is indeed an actual market. Bulgaria is home to this often misunderstood bride market of the Kalaiji Roma. The Kalaiji people are a subgroup of the Roma who gather annually to sell their daughters. The girls are usually aged between 16 and 20, and while this may seem odd to an outsider, this is considered the ideal age for marriage for the locals. While shocking to many Europeans, this practice has persisted for years and reflects Kalaiji's adherence to tradition. Families usually pull out daughters from the eighth grade and then put them up in the bride market so that they don't get kidnapped by a suitor. Despite concerns about human rights, autonomy, and its relevance in the modern era, the practice is still going strong. Moreover, virginity is held in high esteem within the Kalaiji community. A young woman's purity not only reflects family honor, but also dictates her value in this traditional matrimonial exchange. The preparation process for these young women is steeped in cultural rituals, teachings, and strict adherence to maintaining their purity for marriage. The bride market itself is a colorful and emotional spectacle, resembling a fair where families gather to negotiate matrimonial alliances. Young women, dressed in their finest, are accompanied by their families as negotiations over the bride price ensue. 
the price range usually falls between $7,500 and $11,300. This surpasses the annual earnings of the average Bulgarian worker. Potential suitors bargain with the father until the two can reach a deal. The bargaining process itself is influenced by the perceived beauty of the bride. The price may escalate significantly for brides considered exceptionally beautiful, with potential bids reaching up to $13,000 or even $21,000 for those deemed to possess great beauty. However, the bride market is not without its controversies. Critics argue that it commodifies women, violates their rights to choose, and perpetuates gender stereotypes. Despite these criticisms, the Kalaiji view the bride market as a crucial aspect of their cultural identity, preserving traditions, ensuring social cohesion, and maintaining their distinctiveness. To better understand the bride market, one needs some historical context. Historically renowned for their craftsmanship and coppersmithing, the Kalaiji's nomadic lifestyle and adaptation to economic changes have shaped their distinct identity. Socioeconomically, the Kalaiji are perceived as more affluent but still face discrimination and social exclusion. Culturally, their adherence to traditions, including arranged mariages through the bride market, distinguishes them from other Roma communities and the dominant Bulgarian culture. As for the girls themselves, the perspectives vary, from acceptance and anticipation to resistance and defiance reflecting a community at a crossroads between tradition and modernity. Number two, no laughing. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, weddings take on a unique twist where expressing joy and laughter is a strong urge that the couple must resist. The tradition of no laughter weddings is deeply rooted in societal norms and beliefs. The couple hires a comedian to perform during their ceremony Everyone gets to have an excellent time at the wedding. Great, right? Well, there's a catch. The couple must refrain from laughing, even if the comedian has everyone else in stitches. According to local folklore, it is believed that weddings should be solemn occasions, marked by reverence and respect for the sacred union taking place. Laughter is perceived as disrespectful or even sacrilegious in this context. One of the most striking aspects of no laughter weddings is the attire worn by participants. Both the bride and groom typically dress in somber collars, often opting for black or dark hues. Additionally, guests are expected to refrain from engaging in any behavior that may evoke laughter or frivolity. This is a test of the couple's commitment to taking their vows seriously. If either of them so much as snickers, the ceremony comes to an abrupt halt. Yes, the community takes this ritual very seriously. It's a unique way of ensuring the seriousness of marriage and underscores the cultural nuances surrounding weddings in the Congo. During the wedding ceremony itself, elders or religious leaders recite traditional prayers and perform rituals. These rituals serve to bless the union and invoke the blessings of ancestors upon the newlyweds. Any deviation from the prescribed solemnity is met with disapproval and may be considered an ill omen for the marriage. The seriousness of no laughter weddings extends to the post-ceremony celebrations as well. While festivities may still take place, they are conducted with restraint and decorum. Music and dancing are subdued, and guests are expected to maintain a respectful demeanor. Number 1. Sing Sings for Love In the lush jungles of Papua New Guinea, a unique ritual known as Sing Sings for Love is associated with weddings. So, what is it? Well, men adorn their bodies with vibrant paints and wear elaborate feathered costumes to impress women. The term Sing Sings derives from the imitation of male birds who use colorful displays and songs to attract mates in the natural world. These festivals can involve as many as 100 regional, provincial, and national dance groups. Modern Sing Sings were established by the government to promote unity and peaceful interaction among tribes with historical enmities. The first Sing Sing was held in Goroka in 1957, marking the beginning of a tradition that continues to thrive today. 
these festivals allow the participants to celebrate diversity, foster social cohesion, and promote peace among communities. Sing Sings in Papua New Guinea are living expressions of cultural identity, heritage, and resilience. Through dance, music, and art, these celebrations bridge the past and present, uniting communities and preserving traditions for generations. Well, that's all for now. If you loved this video, be sure to check out this other one on your screen. It will blow your mind.